As you can hear, I've hardly got any voice. <clears throat> Partly to do with, obviously I had some sort of underlying cold or something like that. <clears throat> but I also did a, a seven hour rehearsal, sort of vocals and guitar, songwriting. Obviously lots of things turned out to be in the wrong key. Obviously I strained my voice, blah, 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 blah. So at the age of 63, I'm still making those mistakes. Um, anyway, never mind. Um, I've also, I've just moved back to Kent from Sussex. And um, I'm sort of walking around a lot of the back lanes that I used to, used to be close to where I used to live with my my sort of family home and it's a lovely sunny day as you can see if you're watching the video and um, you know I know that obviously you have a relationship to land and where you live it's that's an important element but interestingly even when you get affected by um, a land that you sort of know. Now I've never walked this particular route before. This is around the back of a place called West Peckham. But it seems so sort of familiar to me and uh, it's, it's really lovely to be back. Now when I was younger um, I, I grew up in Cornwall, but I was born in Kent. And whenever we used to come back, my father used to say, right, OK, take a deep breath and inhale the, the air of the place that you were born. You know, because you never question these things, do you, when you're younger? But there's something in that. There's something in that sort of thing of coming back to someone you know and being a good sort of Gemini as I am. I have two places that are really sort of feature for me and one of them's Cornwall, of course, and the other one's Kent. Um, and I've always puzzled over the fact that I could never uh, build up my work anywhere else. It just didn't seem to happen for me. Um, and subsequently, it's really good to be back in the area that I still teach um, I'm now only just down the road from, what I, you know, what we call the world headquarters of uh, um, Blues Camp. Just pause a minute. Right, um, yeah, so, coming back again. It's, it's been interesting to see, as soon as I made a decision to come back here, that uh, I started getting more work, which is sort of odd. Not particularly because I was advertising any more or any less, but um, things started to, to sort of join up. The dots started to join up. And I had a series of very odd uh, situations where people started contacting me who I'd known years ago, uh, wanting to do projects, you know, people that had been involved in projects in the past got in contact. Um, I managed to get the, the Blues Camp 
recording project underway, which is I've been trying to do for about three years. Uh, and that's why I lost my voice, incidentally. Uh, so we're just going to have a bit of noise here. Um, there's some lovely old houses here, off the beaten track. It's quite amazing, I forget. Uh, how lovely the English countryside is down this neck of the woods. Um, yeah, so I also have been planning on getting some sort of writing retreat. And I might have mentioned one of these uh, about this on the one I did about Cornwall while I was walking on the beach. Walking on the sand is the episode, I think. But of course, I've ended up with this because I've got this small sort of studio uh, where I can, at my own leisure, write, which is exactly what I was looking for. And now I've got it. Um, but I wasn't looking for it, if you see what I mean. So I was sort of thinking about this in the sort of creative process that we, we involve ourselves with, that we maybe we try to micromanage too much. Maybe we should just, you know, just get that idea out there, what it is that we want, and just carry on going and see what comes up. And... Um, You know, it is, it's evident in my own life that this works for me. Again, I can't say that it would work for anybody else, but it's certainly worth a shot. What I found is it's just like, you know, you focus on what it is that you'd like. Because that's not any big thing. You know, maybe write a few things down as if you've got it. I certainly did, I have done that for a little while. Um, and then just forget about it. So act as if it's already happening. I don't know if there's something in the unconscious where you start to seek out those things unwittingly. It's certainly not logical, that's the thing. And the more I get involved in, you know, the more I've been involved teaching people about creativity, the more I realize that most of this stuff is not logical. And as soon as we try to put constraints around it as, you know, map building, it will restrict it, or it will stop it happening, or it deludes us into the fact that we think we know how it happens. And I don't really know whether anything that anything like that is true. The best thing that we can have is a is a map that we can navigate, but that map is quite scant at its best. The more you make it sort of complex. Sometimes that doesn't work. So, I'm just sort of enjoying the sunshine, because apparently I've been, I've been told it's gonna to rain for the rest of the week. I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, I'm sort of going back to do a bit of writing. I've got a couple of things obviously I've got to sort out because I've only just moved. But I'm also not, I'm not busting a gut to to get anything done, particularly. I'm just putting things out there for stuff. Um, I've got a couple of interesting things going on at the end of this week. Meeting up with a load of people down in the West Country. Uh, which is good for making connections, obviously. And then hopefully the next day I'll be doing a podcast, or an interview on somebody else's podcast about William S. Burroughs and Brian Geis, who are the sort of masterminds be behind the cut-up technique. Um, so I've been doing quite a lot of reading about that to sort of prep up for it. Um, so, yeah, got some interesting things coming. 
Uh, so going back to our stuff about, as Richard Edwards would call it, psychogeography. Um, have a think about where you feel at home. And uh, you know, it might you might have to work that out logically from the point from some point of view, but. I think intrinsically there is an element of, of feeling of belonging and uh, I think that's worth sort of contemplating and if your ancestral links take you to very different places that's worth pondering how you feel about those do those places sort of in a strange sort of way feel like home even though you may not have ever gone there sort of contemplate that um, just as a as a point uh, again you know Sussex was obviously an ancestral home for me but I never really felt home there even when I walked through some of the villages that my ancestors had lived in, maybe were buried in, I still didn't feel like there was anything familiar about it. And uh, I thought it was a bit strange, personally. But there we go. Right, okay, so enough of my rambling for this time being, and I'll catch up soon, and presumably I'll, I'll have a voice. See you.